Hey YouTube, it's Gypsy. I had the idea the other day to do a video on what I call tarot centricities. Um, little habits that you do, uh, for those of you who read tarot cards, especially for those who read for others, kind of what do you do? What do you do to get yourself in the right mindset? I've noticed a lot of people are different. It's almost like your fingerprint. Everyone has their own way of grounding and centering and getting their mind in a place where they feel like they are tuned in and ready to receive messages that they feel they need for themselves or that they need to pass on to others. So I thought I'd start out by throwing mine out there and sharing with you guys kind of what I do to get myself centered. This is more for when I read for other people. When I read for myself, which honestly isn't that often, I don't go through quite as much of a um, as a, of a ritual as I do with other people mainly because I'm usually doing mine in the evening when I'm kind of having my own quiet time anyway but when I'm reading for other people I feel like I really need to be at my tip top I, I don't want to let my junk kind of interfere with theirs so if I've you know regardless of my day when I'm reading for other people I'll, you know, I'll set aside some time when I know I'm going to go do two or three readings at one time and I'll get myself in a space or let my family know, guys, I need about an hour, maybe a little more, depending on how many I've got to do. And then I go through this regimen. If I'm reading for myself, it really depends on my day. If I've had a crappy day, then I'll go through all of this. If I've had a pretty decent day and I feel like I just need to be quiet for a little while, then I'll just meditate for a little bit and then I'll go into my reading and I'll show you where I start. So, first of all, I'm going to show you all of the different kind of, there's a little bit of a a stone time <laughs> in my uh, getting ready ritual. Not that kind of stone. Where I use a lot of different kinds of stones to kind of get myself grounded, and that to me is very symbolic. And I want to emphasize, before I start going through all these different things, I do not necessarily believe that these stones by themselves have properties that come from the stones and instill themselves in me. These stones and these, these different methods that I use represent something to me. So whether or not it's coming from the stones or whether it's just in my head and I feel like this is what, that's really what's important. And I don't, um, I don't want to mislead anyone and say and make, make anyone feel like, this rock has this magical power and this rock has this magical power and it's coming from elsewhere these are things that these stones bring out within myself at least that is my own perspective so there's my disclaimer okay I'm not gonna try to sell you guys super rocks and tell you you need to go out and get these you could probably pick up a piece of granite off the ground and if it works for you and makes you feel closer to the earth and makes you feel centered rock and roll Okay, here's my little collection of stones that I use. My first step is usually to take a, like a really warm bath, and I like to play, I don't have my phone with me, but it doesn't really matter. I like to play uh, like New Age music channel from Pandora, I like the drum beat stuff. I've kind of got it to where that's kind of what it'll play for me. Uh, so I'll kind of lay in the tub and I'll relax, put my hair up. And these are Himalayan salt crystals. I actually bought these from Piper. <clears throat> Uh, Piper's Pagan Path on Facebook. Piper with an uh, Y, P Y, P E R H on Facebook. I mean on uh, YouTube. Um, anyway, she's got a shop, an Etsy shop, and I got these from her. They're awesome. I love them a lot, and I will kind of stick these in the tub with me and use these to kind of relax my body, center my mind, let go of anything that might be kind of clouding up my my head at the time. And this is kind of where I start my centering process. And this is for whenever I'm either had a bad day and I want to do something for myself or, um, heck, I've just used them when my body hurt. But I've also, I definitely use them whenever I read for other people. My second step is uh, my Moki Balls. And I've done a video on this, so if you're interested in that, I can put a link down below <clears throat> in regards to Moki Balls. But I hold these in my hand and I, you know, I, of course, I get out of the tub. That's that step. And then I sit, um, I put some clothes on, and then I sit in my bed, because that's my happy place, and I sit there with the stones in my hands, and I 
Um, I kind of let them ground out my energy. I let them kind of, you know, by this point I'm relaxed and I'm calm and I'm receptive. And this is kind of like, um, you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like spiritual lotion after the cleansing. Okay. That's what these are kind of for. Um, the last thing that I do for myself is I, I like to hold these in my hands. This is an amethyst and this is a citrine. They're the same size. Uh, when I hold them together, they make the shape of a heart. It just, I feel like they're two parts of the same sort of thing. I'm all about polarity. I had a video about it up and I took it down. I need to put it back up. I'm all about polarity. These two stones came from two different places, but I feel like they belong together. And one is for energy and happiness and the other is for intuition and and clear thoughts. And they work together brilliantly for my tarot reading. So I hold these in my hand for a little while. These are like my little, these are my little friends. Okay, so those are those. And then this is my selenite heart. <clears throat> and this is actually for my cards. So while I'm, you know, while I'm sitting on my bed and I'm doing my little mokey ball thing and I'm doing my little um, um, amethyst and citrine thing, I, I like to have my, my selenite heart kind of sitting on my cards. And that, you know, makes me feel like my cards are getting a little bit of the same treatment that I'm giving myself. Selenite is good for uh, clearing negative energy, and it does not have to be cleared itself. So I see this as just kind of, you know, lifting lifting out any energy that may be in my cards, that may be there from the last reading. Um, you know, if someone else touched them at some point, or if my kids handle them, it removes, it, it resets my cards. And, and I do, and I'll tell you, Another thing I do whenever I shuffle my cards, and some people that do tarot are going to go, oh my god, but I do. I take my cards, I cut them, and I get Vegas style. Bam. Yes, I shuffle my cards like that. Sue me. That's how I clear the energy in my cards. Um, I don't do that over and over again. I like to shuffle this way whenever I'm getting ready to actually read. I do it about three to five times, uh, depending on how I feel, you know. Um, but typically, it's about three times. And at this point, I know I'm ready to read. I cut them three times. I pick them back up, and then I start reading. And I don't pick them back up in a sort of certain order. I just roll with the flow, and I pick them up, how I pick them up, and I set them down, how I set them down. And then I go with my, with my reading. So that's what I do, and, you know, and, and then after I finish reading, um, I'll usually shuffle them once and I put them back in the bag. Oh, here's another thing I almost missed. This is a little bag that I keep with my tarot cards. This is my tarot bag for my cards. These, this is all about my personal cards because it's my baby deck. <laughs> um, I keep them in this bag right here. I have a couple of sheets that I've gotten from various places here in the back. They're like my deviant moon spread and things like that. I need to add it to my shop. And I also have a cloth that I like to use with my cards. Uh, this is my tarot cloth. I know they say you're supposed to use um, like a plain colored cloth so that it's not too busy. I like busy. I like this cloth. This, you may have seen this on my Etsy shop. This is the background. For my, I love this. I actually got this in a really cool shop in Houston and it's called the Blue Hand. And it's just a neat little kitschy shop. She doesn't consider herself a metaphysical shop, but it is. And she has all types of stuff. She's got statues of Ganesh. She has um, all sorts of elemental type little jars and statues. And um, just a, it's like one of those things where it's like a house that's been converted into a shop. And it's just full of crap, but it's awesome. So she has this one little section where she has some shirts and some wraps and things like that and some placemats. And these are like handmade placemats. And I'd looked over there before. I was looking at some scarves because I was looking for a tarot drop, a tarot cloth um, that I could use. And the first time I was in there, I just nothing really spoke to me. I didn't really see anything that I wanted to use. So I was like, meh. So the second time I went back, I was like, you know what? I'm going to look on this shelf this time. And I had missed it the first time. So I looked on the shelf. And this was not part of a set. This was sitting all alone. And I saw it, you know, just like this, sitting in the shelf. And I was like, ooh, pretty colors. And I grabbed it. And as I grabbed it, I realized that is what I had been looking for. And I literally said out loud, there you are. <laughs> and the lady was like, can I help you? I was like, no, no, I found exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. 
So this is my tarot cloth. I use this when I read for friends. I use this when I read for myself. This is where my cards like to lie down. <laughs> because I said so. So another little item that I got that same day is this little bag. And I bought this little bell ding, 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 to go on it. Um, you know, it's just, it's a happy little bag. I keep some other stones in here. And I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them because honestly, I don't know if I can remember all of the names. Um, but these are stones that I just, I like to keep near my tarot because they, um, you know, they just, I think they bring about good energy for it. Um, I have a clear quartz point here. And then I have a moonstone. And I believe I bought these from Dragonfly 579. Dragonfly, I'm really sorry if I just said the wrong numbers. But I know her name is Dragonfly Mystic. Her link is going to be down below. <laughs> she also has an Etsy shop. I'll put the link to her shop down below. Um, and then I have a rose quartz. And then I have, oh yeah, yeah, I always say it wrong. Paradite, peri, peri, something. It's, it's, it helps with being in a good mood. It helps to stave off depression and anxiety and negative feelings. Um, kind of the same for this. Crystal Price, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Crystal Price, Crystal Pricey, Crystal Price. Anyway, I have like four little pieces of that in there. Um, and that's what I keep in this little bag. I don't always necessarily set them out when I use my cards, but they are always in the bag where I store my cards. Um, and so, you know, they're just, I like them. I like them and I feel like they need to be in there. So they're there. And that's good enough for me. So anyway, um, all of you out there, fellow tarot readers um, who read either just for yourself at home or for other people, whatever, I don't care. If you have a closeness with your cards, you have if you have a ritual that you carry out before you read, do a VR or just maybe comment down below and let me know what it is you do. I'm really interested in finding out what other people do. I like I said, I've read a little bit and I've you know I've heard people kind of mention stuff that they do, but um, I want to I want to know what you guys do. What do you do? You know what is what's your opinion of what I do? Am I like a total fruitcake or what? Just kidding. <laughs> I know I'm a fruitcake. <laughs> you don't have to reiterate. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I'll probably just you know I'll cry alone. All right. You guys have a great day and blessed be.